Welcome back to Dr. Sellers Educate. We're thrilled to have you back with us and we're excited to share another snapshot with you. We are gonna start with something a little different. Normally we jump right into the snapshot, but there are a few updates I wanna share with you before we jump in. First, go ahead and subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you can receive information right away. What will happen is you will see um, Dr. Sellers Educate is one of your subscribed YouTube channels every time you log into YouTube, and that way you can click on us and get your information ASAP. And then second of all, you're going to click on that notification bell, the little bell icon is going to alert you every single time we post a new snapshot, which happens to be every week. We want you to take advantage of this material as soon as it's released so that you can be fully equipped to be successful on the certification exam. All right, so that's update number one. Number two, I want to make sure that you all are doing your work that you need to do to ensure you are successful on the exam. There are a couple of updates that we have recently heard from nurse educators that have taken the exam. First of all, it's no surprise that you should expect to see some questions related to the clinical teaching role on your CNE exam. If you're taking the clinical version, absolutely, you'll see it. Even the novice version, you may see it. But we're going to hone in on some of those key concepts that you want to consider related to the role of the clinical faculty member. Um, so if you see several questions, just know that it's expected to be on the exam and hopefully we will help you close more gaps today at the end of this snapshot. Third housekeeping tip. We have done some additional research and we have provided what we call a overview of the exam question. Okay, not every exam question will this apply to, but for several of them it will. We want you to realize that each question is broken down into the three segments. The first segment is going to be a statement in that question. The second one is going to be um, some information related to that specific scenario or circumstance, okay? And then the third component is going to be how will you apply the information that you know related to that scenario and that concept. Again, stay with me. Many of the nurse educator certification exam questions are going to be a three-part question. It's going to be a statement or a concept or a fact, okay, that will start. The second component of the question is going to be a scenario or a circumstance related to that specific concept. And then the third component is going to be the actual question. OK, that's your time to shine, your time to validate that you are a competent nurse educator and an expert in your specialty. All right, So that's a little bit of information that we wanted to share with you before we jump into the content. So shaking it up to be a little different than uh, what we normally do during our snapshots. Um, again, we're delighted that you are here and we are going to go ahead and jump into our content. If you do not have it in front of you right now, what you wanna do is pull out your Billings and Halstead teaching and nursing text, as well as if you're taking the, um, the academic nurse educator review course or taking the actual exam, and hopefully you've taken our review course too, but if you haven't, head over to www.drsellerseducate.com and that's where you're going to find all of the review courses and resources available to you. Many of them are free, okay? So take advantage of free resources. Remember that we only include content that is aligned with NLN recommendations. If you have any questions or need to reach out to us, you can see our new contact info here, which is info at drsellerseducate.com. That's how you can reach us directly. And we do still have our Gmail address, but we um, have established a website now, a .com website that you can uh, easily access our information there. So clinical application, what is it? It is all about both the art and the science of nursing. So it brings the two together, integrating the psychomotor, the cognitive and effective domains, our three learning domains that we have learned about and talked about quite a bit. How does that all work? What does that all mean? First, we promote and establish a culture of safety and quality by teaching students regarding these important concepts. We educate them about joint commission, CMS, and other regulatory bodies that focus on patient safety and quality. As an academic nurse educator in the classroom, we wanna teach about CUSIN standards and align our education plans and how we teach, as well as the content of our teaching aligned, we want to align with these cues and standards. And what do I mean by that? All right, so first, let's break that down a little bit more. When I say 
Cuson Standard Shit Guide, how we teach, it should be scenarios. It should be unfolding case studies in the classroom setting where we are talking about the specific clinical experiences that students should expect to face that are directly correlated with quality and safety. Okay, so remember that this is cues and standards are centered all around how we educate our students about the quality and safety components of patient care. In 2016, ANA devoted uh, or committed to prescribing how and what the culture of safety standards look like in the healthcare environment. Okay, so we wanna make sure that we are educated about those standards, first of all, as educators, and then that we're able to integrate those concepts and that information into our teaching with our students. And then um, by providing unfolding case studies and, and talking through scenarios, we are able to connect theory with clinical. Let's take a look at a practice test question. Remember what we talked about initially, the three-part component. This is a great example of how this kind of plays out. All right, so we have a nurse faculty member on a clinical unit that notices that the students are not correctly documenting their patient's vital signs. He is an excellent clinical faculty member. So what does he do? He develops a short exercise to be used in that day's post-conference to practice vital sign documentation. This is an example of which type of assessment. So if you wanna pause and, and write down your answer and come back when you're ready. If you chose D, you are correct, formative assessment. The question really broke down and is a great example of what we just talked about. The three-part question first, it gave you a fact, right? That if we have a nurse faculty member on a clinical unit, notice this is that students are not correctly documenting vital signs. A little bit information as this is a, a scenario that you want to consider as you process what the best answer is gonna be. Well, he uses a best practice, which is to immediately provide feedback to students in a non-threatening, non-intimidating way. He engages them uh, in three learning domains because students have had a chance to use their psychomotor skills. He's bringing in this cognitive component. Um, and there, of course, are some affective behaviors too, of course, that students are going through when they realize that they have not been performing a clinical skill correctly, all right? So um, let me go on camera just to keep you all engaged. So D is the correct assessment because we know that clinical experiences at this stage as described in this scenario and in this question is that we're continuing to give student feedback, right? So we are forming, helping to form their skills, their knowledge and ability in accurately documenting and performing um, patient vital sign information, capturing that information. A, B and C are not related. So that's why those are not correct. Teaching in nursing, it is the textbook that you want to use to help close those gaps, whether you're taking the academic clinical nurse educator, the academic nurse educator, or the novice exam, okay? All three exams, really the foundational knowledge that you need to close those gaps are going to be listed in this textbook. Chapter 18 focuses exclusively on the concepts, the skills, the knowledge that are needed for faculty teaching in the clinical setting. Even though the academic um, nurse educator primary responsibility is not one of a clinical faculty member, we are still responsible for ensuring that there is alignment between the learning objectives and the clinical experiences that students will have. A key responsibility is for us to understand what our learners' needs are when it comes to clinical application. Remember, there's an art and a science component and they come together as part of the clinical application and clinical experiences. The types of clinical environment, they're gonna include the simulation lab, the skills lab, and the clinical setting, okay? All three incorporate and integrate clinical application components to help the students scaffold their learning and ultimately develop the ability to critically think, to use clinical judgment, and to provide safe patient care. We wanna ensure that there's alignment between the theoretical components and the clinical components. So that's our responsibility when we think about clinical application. So as you start to process some of these concepts and key points that we're targeting, you can easily see why some educators show up for their exam and they think, oh, wait a minute, there's lots of questions about clinical application 
perhaps this is the wrong exam. It is not the wrong exam. There are a lot of questions that may show up on your exam related to what your responses would be, what are your responsibilities as it relates to the learner's ability to apply clinical concepts and provide ultimately patient. Ultimately, it's about providing safe patient care. So initial teaching and learning of psychomotor, cognitive and effective skills, it begins in the laboratory setting. We plant the seeds for students in the theory, on the theory side in the classroom in introducing some of these concepts. But when the psychomotor components happen, when students are physically doing the work, practicing the skills that we talked about in the classroom, that happens in the lab setting. There are supplemental clinical learning experiences that we engage with our students um, in, correct? So simulation making sure you understand high fidelity, low fidelity, mid fidelity. You don't have to understand exactly how they all work, just to have a general understanding of the benefit that each of them will bring into, again, students' ability to apply the clinical concepts. Virtual clinicals are another great opportunity for students to learn and connect the dots. And then those unfolding case studies that really show up in a discussion much like what students will see in the actual clinical setting. Okay, so these are all concepts centered around our ability to connect the art and the science for our students in a way that allows them to practice and deliver safe patient care. So today you are committing to setting whatever your goal is. Everyone is at a different point on their journey, but we want you to make a plan so that you can execute on that plan, which is getting to work. Stick to the plan as much as you possibly can. We all get off track, life happens, you pick up an extra course, you have an additional clinical assignment, your grant gets funded, um, or your research gets funded by a grant. Those are all great and exciting things, but we ultimately want you to reach your goal. Here at Dr. Sellers Educate, we are here to support you every step of the way. Everyone is at a different point on their journey, and that's fine. Uh, we're here to support you. That is what we do, and that is our mission, to support every single nurse educator to achieve certification. So are you ready? Are you ready for the certification exam? Well, what is the question? Okay, glad you asked. There are, for the most part, several three-part questions on the exam. You want to think about what is the question asking you? Don't allow the distractors to mislead you in looking at exactly what the question is asking so you can decipher the best answer. Think about what do I know for sure, okay? When you show up for the exam, that's what you wanna think about in every single question. What is this question asking? What do I know for sure? As it relates to what the question is asking. Just the facts, right? Don't make stuff up, don't make assumptions, don't read too much in the question, just focus on what is the question asking? Sounds simple, right? It's much of what we tell our nursing students pre-licensure in preparation for the NCLEX exam. All right, so let's practice test questions. So which statement or question would foster reflection and learner professional growth best? You can pause the video here. I'll see you back for the answer. If you chose B, you are correct. Tell me what went well during the Foley catheter insertion. This is an excellent way to engage in students' understanding of concepts and helping them understand the why behind their actions. Psychomotor knowledge is excellent, but we've got to ensure there's a cognitive component to it as well, that they're connecting the dots. So one key teaching strategy for salience is helping learners reflect on practice to identify what is important in a given situation. We want to under, understand how students prioritize and what safe patient care practices are they implementing as they are performing those psychomotor skills. By asking the learner to share what went well during a Foley catheter insertion, the clinical educator is prompting the learner to reflect on actions, again, the why. This reflective activity will help promote learner growth and critical thinking and the development of clinical judgment as well. So options A, C, and D are seeking factual information and are not the best way to facilitate clinical reasoning and learner reflection. You are moving forward and you are taking action. We are so excited that you have joined us for another snapshot. We hope this was helpful. Feel free to reach out with any questions. You have two options, drsellerseducate at gmail.com or reaching us 
at the location of info at drsellerseducate.com. All right, coaching is available. We have our monthly bootcamp that's available as well. Go ahead and head over to www.drsellerseducate.com for more information. Until next time, have a great one, everybody. Bye-bye.